Thank you for joining us in the living room of Deacon Philip Fernandez and his wife Joan. Deacon Philip has been serving at St. Michael's Parish in Waterloo and uh, Joan has been right by his side as they live out the vocation to married life together. And so thank you for being open to doing this interview. You're welcome, You're Father. welcome Father. I would just like to start by asking you about your vocation to married life. Um, how did that first unfold? Well, Joan is the one who initiated that. And it is very interesting how it sort of unfolded. Do you want to jump yeah. in? Well, basically, I think that I was wanting to get married. I felt that was my vocation, to be a married person. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, my father was not doing so well. He was very sick. And uh, the priest, parish priest in our church came to me and said, uh, there's a novena, and it's going to be for every day for a week mm -hmm. to Our Lady. And uh, why don't you come and do the novena, and you can say a prayer for your father. Mm -hmm. And I went every day after work to church, and I noticed Philip in church as well. And I knew why I was there. I was there because my father was not well. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I had no reason why he would be there. Mm -hmm. There was no reason. So I realized that that was something that he uh, did. He liked to come to church every day. Mm -hmm. And to me, um, to be married, I wanted to be married with someone who had the same faith as I did. Mm -hmm. uh, being Catholic, going to church, practicing their faith, just like I did. And so I got to know Philip a little more. I decided that someone, I'm mm -hmm. going to look into him and see if we are compatible, if mm -hmm. we can love each other, if we can be together. I wanted marriage to be something that was permanent. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, uh, my parents were married for, you know, forever. We are mm -hmm. nine children. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted that type of a marriage, that type of a union, that type of a togetherness. Yeah. And that's how it happened. With all the vocations out there, though, that you could live out, you know, to single life, to uh, uh, consecrated life, why marriage? Because I wanted to have children. Mm -hmm. And to have children, you had to be married. So mm -hmm. I decided uh, the rest of the... I have lots of nuns in my life. I uh, knew a lot of nuns because mm -hmm. I, I studied in a convent school. Mm -hmm. So I knew nuns um, and priests and also, like, brothers. There were brothers who had come in and did a, a work, and we did a lot of work, being that it was a third world country. Mm -hmm. um, we were, as youth, made, not made really, but encouraged mm -hmm. to come and help them mm -hmm. do their work. Uh, and so we were involved in a lot of stuff. Yeah. So uh, for me, I knew what nuns did and what priests did, and, but to have children, that's what I wanted. You know, raising four children these days, I can only imagine how difficult and trying that can be, but also, you know, a joy-filled experience, I would imagine. What's that like for you, uh, being married to Philip, you know, and, and the responsibilities that he has? Well, I think that uh, coming here to Canada, I knew from the very beginning that if, I, if we wanted to bring up a family, mm -hmm. then I would be the one staying at home mm -hmm. and bringing up the kids myself. Mm -hmm. uh, we had no family here. Our extended family was still back home. Mm -hmm. So who could I trust to take care of my children? Yeah. And so I decided, we decided together that I would be the one staying at home mm -hmm. and he would be the one working. Mm -hmm. And so he would go to work and I would stay at home. And we kind of managed with whatever, whatever income came into the home. We managed, mm -hmm. we, we decided lots of things. We had no car. Mm -hmm. If you think of people, yeah, I always say to myself, if you think we had no car for about, I would say, eight years wow. into coming to Canada. We used buses and and walked. Mm -hmm. um, but that's basically what we did. We made those sacrifices of saying uh, what is more important. And how important was our children, bringing mm -hmm. them up, having the love, the caring of being at home. So from the very beginning, as my kids were little, I used to bake. They used to bake with me. Mm -hmm. I used to go out to the park with them once a day. And, you know, if they colored, we all colored together on the table mm -hmm. and made little booklets. Uh, as you uh, continue to live out your vocations, uh, both to married life and, and uh, the permanent diaconate, um, is there one thing that stands out for you that uh, you thank God for? I think of the grace God has given us, 
I, we talk about the grace we receive in baptism and how he recreates us. And sometimes we say, oh, you know, that's all theological talk. But the tension that you face in your work life, which is the sacrament of confirmation, or your diaconal life, which is the sacrament of ordination, or matrimonial life, you suddenly realize that if you show up and be willing to do things, God gives you the grace to do it. And I think mm -hmm. that's exactly what we can give witness to in our married life, mm -hmm. is that God gave us the grace to bring up children. Mm -hmm. Yes, in a very limited income, in a new country, without family and friends support, but we gain family and friends down here through our parishes. Then the same thing in ministry. I mean, uh, God gives me the grace to be a presence to a person at the hospital who's lost a child, Mm. or at the prison who is going through the fact that they made choices which has put them into isolation. Yeah. Our in the parish where we have a vibrant community that comes to celebrate the Eucharist every Sunday. Mm. Uh, but that's all through God's grace. Mm -hmm. And so I always think that the tension always gets resolved because God helps you. Mm -hmm. He gives you the grace. It's my job is to say, yes, God, what do you would like me to do now? Hmm. How about you, Joan? What stands out for you? I would say, like I said from the beginning, God was very important in my life. Faith was very important. That's how I chose who I was going to marry and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think God has always been a great presence in my life. Mm -hmm. In everything that I do, if I get frustrated, if I feel um, uh, inadequate, or feel like, oh, you know, just like you asked me the question, you know, you're a mom at home, did you ever think of going out to work? Yeah. Yes, that question is always approached. There are lots of people who ask me that question. Mm -hmm. You know, why are you at home? Why don't you work? Are your kids old enough to take care of themselves? You yeah. know, that type of a question. And I've always got the peace is through my faith, through my praying. Mm -hmm. Because I know that they, yes, I could go to work. Mm -hmm. Yes, I could do a lot of things. But if I make a decision, I make a decision not because of what people are saying, yeah. not because of what people are going to make lead me. I don't have to have people leading me. It's mm -hmm. God that leads me. Mm -hmm. So if I pray, God will give me the answer as to what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And then you feel that peace. You know, you always feel that peace when you're so troubled. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sure you must be feeling that peace as well. It does, yeah. Suddenly you feel that kind of a, a, a peace that, you've come to this decision and it's the right decision mm. and this is something that you're going to stick by and stand by and do um, I run into people who are considering married life as you know their sacrament for different reasons uh, and as they continue to discern that uh, that vocation um, what advice could you give them given that Joan was the one who sought me out I'll tell you what happened at our first date mm -hmm. it was the biggest disaster that could ever happen the vehicle, which was a motorcycle that I had, collapsed on me. Mm. We were going to a place that she had no clue about for dinner. And if you think that, yes, this is the time when someone could say, you know, let's call it quits. This is not worked out. We'll try it another day. Mm -hmm. At that time, Joan looked at me and she said, don't worry. We'll continue. Oh, wow. And that's when I realized what commitment is. So all I will say to people, young people who are getting together, is that let your, if your mind is saying yes, then let your body follow. Mm. Because that is what it means. Is, is someone willing to make a commitment to you? And are you willing to make that same commitment to them? I would say that you got to be very true to yourself and uh, never allow others to influence you to do things that you yourself start feeling, um, should I say, pushed to do. you got to be true and be what you think you need to do. I just want to shift the focus a little bit uh, to the uh, sacrament of, um, of orders and uh, the permanent diaconate. And um, I'm wondering, uh, for couples out there who may be contemplating, you know, uh, you know, the, moving forward with this uh, ministry, um, 
Is there any um, advice that you could give them? I think it's it's comes down to it is a call. Personally, I was called by someone in our parish, and it was reaffirmed by some person that I still don't know the name of at St Mary's Church in downtown Kitchener, mm. who came for daily mass and just said to me, "Have you considered the diaconate?" Mm. So. I would encourage people to consider it, mm. think about it. Yes, you'll say, okay, but we have, we've got a, a job to do. Mm. At that time, we had a one-year-old child and three who were in their teens. Mm. Not the best of times to think about it. But the question is, it doesn't matter what your personal circumstances, you have to consider it. Mm. And one of the beautiful things that happened with us as a family, we considered it. Uh, the parish community helped us and then the diocese helped us in my formation by sending us to St. Augustine and each year in that formation process was an opportunity for us to get to know is this truly my calling mm. and as an adult we made the determination at the end six months before my ordination where we asked formally asked the bishop we think we're ready bishop mm to make that commitment, that diagonal commitment for the rest of our lives. Wow. So I would encourage couples to consider it, mm -hmm. seek the support of their own family, seek the support of their parish community, mm -hmm. seek the support of the diocese. The bishop has been very gracious mm -hmm. in the formation program where you each year are formed and you see and examine yourself and yeah. you come to the calling and say, yes, I think this is my calling. And then the journey continues, and now it's going to be six years since I've been a deacon. Mm. I find that each year I'm being formed. In fact, I now look at it this way and say, Good Lord, what are you going to ask me to do today? Mm. And I don't see an end to it. I mean, I don't see, someone asked me, so how long will this continue? And I don't see an end to it. Wow. How about you, John? What was it like for you to... Um you know, contemplate, uh, you know, Philip considering this call and really the call as a family. I think that for me, uh, being being that I knew Philip very well, <laughs> I know what kind of a person he is. And uh, before he became a deacon, Philip was part of this community. Mm -hmm. And being part of the community, he was involved in lots of organizations um, and uh, participated in them in the boards and stuff like whatever they asked him to do. And I knew that this was something that he did very well, mm. being part of the community. Yeah. And so uh, being that he was called into the diaconate, I didn't feel concerned about that because mm. I knew that that means all the time that he spent in those other organizations yeah. would be now concentrated and put into the diaconate. Mm. So time-wise, it would be the same amount of time Mm -hmm. of him spending outside the home mm -hmm. um, and so for me I think that the formation part the four years of formation uh, was great for me mm -hmm. because I wasn't asked to do anything really it's mm -hmm. just to walk mm -hmm. and so I could absorb everything that the formation was asking me listen to all these wonderful lecturers and um, go through this whole process is there one thing that you learned um, that stands out in the formation process? I think that I, I learned one thing, that if you go there with n no expectations, you go there literally empty, mm. uh, you get filled up. Well, um, I just want to kind of bring things to a close by uh, saying thank you so much for uh, inviting me into no your living room.